Hey guys and welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to look at a showdown between the ASUS Tinkerboard and the Raspberry Pi 3. The ASUS Tinkerboard is a new single board computer that has entered the market to compete with the well-known and well-loved Raspberry Pi 3. So let's get started with the general overview and specs. So this is the ASUS Tinkerboard. It retails for $60 in the US. Um, this board was created by the mega corporation ASUS, a well-known computer part and laptop maker and it was created to compete with the Raspberry Pi 3 and was designed to be more powerful and as well as more feature rich. So this is the main board um, so as you can see on the top you have your standard 40 pin Raspberry Pi GPIO layout but unlike the Raspberry Pi these pins are actually color labeled so it makes it easier when you're wiring something. So your red or your 5 volt pins, your yellow or your 3.3 .3 volt pins, green are your usable GPIO pins, your black are your ground pins, and the blue are actually your I2C EEPROM pins. On the right side of the board, once again, just like your regular Raspberry Pi 3B, you have your four uh, USB ports along with a gigabit ethernet port. On the bottom, you have your micro USB, HDMI, camera connector, and 3.5 millimeter jack. And on the left side, you have your display connector. So in the center with the gray heatsink, uh, which comes included with the board, is your main rock chip processor. On the left side, you have your Wi-Fi chip. And then on the right side, you can see a handful of Realtek chips. Those are actually the chips managing the audio codec and gigabit ethernet. Okay, so this is the Raspberry Pi 3, the latest iteration from the Raspberry Pi Foundation in the Raspberry Pi series. This board is most probably one of the most popular and most probably the most successful single board computer on this market. It retails for 35 US dollars and is available almost around the world. So let's take a look at the main hardware that powers the Raspberry Pi 3. So on the top, just like the ASUS Tinkerboard, this has its own 40-pin uh, GPIO layout. This has almost become an industry standard on the single board computer market. And on the right side, you have your four USB 2.0 ports and your 100 megabits per second Ethernet port. These are all controlled through the SMSC chipset that you can see right on the left side. Then on the bottom of your board, you have your micro USB for power, your HDMI port, only capable of up to 1080p, your camera connector, and then as well as your 3.5 millimeter jack that can be used for audio and video or just for audio and microphone. And then on your left side, you have your display connector and as well as the ceramic Wi-Fi antenna. So the center of the board is the main heart of this uh, board you have your Broadcom BCM2837 processor which is almost proprietary to this board. Okay so now let's take a look at the technical silicon and hardware that is powering both of these boards. So in terms of the processor the Raspberry Pi 3 has a 64-bit ARM Cortex A53 Broadcom BCM2387 chip that uh, is a quad core and um, the, compared to the ASUS Tinkerboard, it is slightly underclocked, but it is 64-bit. So in the deeper technical uh, processor tests, we'll see the difference that this has, but the ASUS Tinkerboard does have a higher clocked 32-bit quad-core ARM Cortex-A17 rock chip RK3288. In terms of GPU, both of these have good GPUs. Uh, the Raspberry Pi 3 has the Broadcom Video Core 4, which is sort of proprietary in terms of API and support. But the ASUS Tinkerboard has the ARM Mali T764, which is well used widely on Android tablets. Um, the RAM on these boards is, again, lackluster with the Raspberry Pi 3. We only have 1 gigahertz of LPDDR2, while the ASUS Tinkerboard has 2 gigs of DDR3. In terms of video output, the Raspberry Pi 3 can do both HDMI and composite, but the video resolution is maxed out at 1080p 60Hz. The ASUS Tinkerboard only has HDMI support, but it can do 4K Ultra HD video, which is capped at 30Hz. If you do drop down to 1080p, you do get up to 60Hz. In terms of connectivity, both boards share the same connectivity options, Ethernet, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth Low Energy. Uh, in terms of storage, both also are capped at using their micro SD card slots under the ports up to 64 gigs as their primary partition. You could, however, mod and use the USB ports as the boot drive. 
In terms of USB ports, we have four full-sized USB 2.0 ports on both boards. GPIO, both boards share the same configuration, Raspberry Pi setup for the 40 pins. In terms of Ethernet configuration, the Raspberry Pi 3 can only be capped at 100 megabits per second, while the ASUS Tinkerboard can go all the way up to 1000 megabits or 1 gigabit per second. So the ASUS Tinkerboard does have a pretty big lead here. In terms of power input, both can only use micro USB. In terms of dimensions, you have the 85.6 by 56 millimeter with 45 grams on the Raspberry Pi versus the ASUS Tinkerboard using the same dimensions but 55 grams. And in terms of price, this is where the big difference comes in between both boards. The Raspberry Pi 3 retails in the US for just 35 US dollars, while the ASUS Tinkerboard is just a penny under 60. Um, while the Raspberry Pi 3 does on in paper look a little uh, underpowered compared to this board, there are certain advantages compared to the ASUS Tinkerboard. Another thing you have to keep in uh, an, an eye on with the ASUS Tinkerboard is heat dissipation. The chip tends to get very hot, so they have actually included a heat sink with this board, so you do have to keep an eye on the heat, so that is one thing you might want to consider when you purchase this board. The Raspberry Pi 3 does fine, even if it doesn't have a heat sink. But now let's take a look at the processor tests. Okay, so these are the technical benchmarks for both of these boards. Um, so in terms of trials, I used Sysbench and I did three trials for each test and then took the average. So in terms of the operating system running, both are running a version of Linux. The Raspberry Pi 3 is running the Ubuntu Mate flavor, which is a 64-bit flavor. I was criticized in my previous videos for using a 32-bit operating system on the Raspberry Pi 3 and was blamed that I wasn't using the full um, processing capabilities, but uh, there was no stable 64-bit operating system available when I did that. But now there is a stable 64-bit Ubuntu Mate OS, so I used the 16.04.2 long-term support version that I downloaded directly from UbuntuMate.org. And then in terms of the ASUS board, I used Tinker OS, which is their official desktop OS. It's 32-bit OS, and I used the 2017-04-17 build, of course downloaded directly from ASUS.com. So the tests I did were the Sysbench 1000 single dual quad core and Sysbench 5000 single core dual core on quad core. So for the test, the lower the time is, that means the faster the board was able to do it in. So in terms of Sysbench 1000, the Pi did it in 6.14 seconds and the ASUS Tinkerboard did it in 4.37 seconds. So we can see there's about a two second gap here, so about just over a 30 to 40% uh, difference between the both. So we can see as we draw, uh, go from single core to dual core to quad core, um, you can see that there is still a gap uh, in terms of percentage, it stays the same, but you can see that it becomes drastically shorter. So why is the 1000 matter? So that's for short, simple computational tasks. So something you're not prolonging the processor for a heavy amount of time. So you can see if you are doing single threaded tasks, the Pi is gonna be a bit slower than the ASUS Tinkerboard. But if you're doing a task that occupies all four threads, you're going to see there's not going to be a big time difference. So now we're taking a look at Sysbench 5000. So this is more of a prolonged test on the processor. So for the Sysbench 5000 single core, you can see the Raspberry Pi did it in 59 seconds, just under a minute, and uh, the Asus Tinkerboard did it in 41 seconds. So here we can actually see the 1.8 gigahertz processor the ASUS has coming into effect. So that higher clock is definitely going to have an effect along with the more uh, uh, more uh, industry standard DDR3 rather than the older DDR2. So you can see there is a pretty big impact, almost 20 seconds. So as we go through the single deal and quad core, there is still a big gap between the Raspberry Pi 3 and the ASUS Tinkerboard. So yeah, so you are paying a pretty big premium over the Raspberry Pi 3 for the ASUS Tinkerboard. So you are going to be seeing those kind of performance um, gaps. So um, it is uh, in favor in terms of performance for the ASUS Tinkerboard. But one thing you might want to take a note of is that the ASUS Tinkerboard in the box comes with a heatsink which I had installed as you had seen in the pictures. So this does show that there's a lot more heat being generated unlike the Raspberry Pi which does not come with a heatsink and can run without a heatsink. So that is one thing you might want to consider when you buy these boards and are planning to uh, put them through their use. So that concludes the benchmarks and now let's take a look at the forms and support of both of these boards.
Okay, so now we're taking a look at the official ASUS website for the Tinkerboard. So they have a pretty big overview of the hardware and the technical specifications, a lot more detail. But if you go to documentations and downloads, so here they have the official downloads for their TinkerOS Android and TinkerOS Debian flavors. So either one you want, you can pick. They also have their many APIs for Scratch, Python, and C. They also have schematics, QVL, and FAQs. So remember, here is some important information. So if you do use TinkerOS, the default username and password are Lenaro. So you might want to keep that in mind. And so right below that, there's actually information on how to install the GPIO API. So you can actually use the GPIO in Python and even C if you want. So there's full instructions here on how to install all the uh, uh, nece necessary programs for that. And right below that you have your GPIO pinout. So I guess you can consider this how uh, basically the Raspberry Pi, everyone knows the Raspberry Pi schematic pinout for pins. So here you've gotten your full technical specifications and that's about it on this website. So you can scroll through, there's multiple specifications, more in detail than I could go in this video. But then they do have an official website called it tinkerboarding.co.uk. So they have multiple stuff here, getting started, uh, latest OS's, hardware specifications, and a form. So let's start with getting started. So for somebody who buys their board, so they do have a pretty good information on how to install everything using Etcher. And then if you go to latest OS downloads, so it does take a few seconds to load. They actually have many more OS's than on the official ASUS website. So you have your ASUS Tinker OS and Android, but here you also have Armbian, Diet Pi, Volume IO, U2, and Flint OS, which is Chrome OS, and Ubuntu. So that might be actually a pretty cool OS to run, Chrome OS, in my opinion. And there's also a few light tutorials on VPN servers, Hulu, and stuff like that. So if you go back to their main page, if you go to hardware specifications, so it does take a few seconds to load. Here you have a more in-depth uh, hardware full overview for the full specifications and they have multiple informa information documents. And then you can go to the form. So here is the Tinkerboard form that's official from ASUS. And so they do have just a few forms uh, available. So here are some hardware and you can see there's some basic questions. But um, they have do have one for software, but this is definitely not as deep as we're about to see with the Raspberry Pi. Yeah, you have some official forms running and stuff, and this could be pretty useful, but when I show the Raspberry Pi stuff, the Raspberry Pi blows it away. And so yeah, that's for the ASUS Tinkerboard. So here's the two official sites that were available when I started. And so now let's take a look at the Raspberry Pi forums. Okay, so now we're on the official Raspberry Pi page where the most resources can be found. So let's start off with downloads. So if you enter the downloads, here are all the operating systems available for Raspberry Pi. So here you can see there's the Ubuntu Mate we use for benchmarks. There's the Snappy Windows IoT, a lot of stuff. Let's go to the community. So here there's like an actual place for public Raspberry Pi events and sister Raspberry Pi community websites where you can learn more for about Raspberry Pi. And here if you go to help, so there's the full technical support guide for Raspberry Pi. So you can see there's a hardware guide, software guide, add-ons, and then there's documentation for setting up, installation, usage, configuration. Let's go to the forums now. And this is the big heart and soul of the Raspberry Pi community. So this board has been out for almost five years now and uh, not in this Raspberry Pi 3 iteration, but it's been out in its own iterations. And this is where the big support team comes in in the past five years. So you can see there's tons of threads. And if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, we can see the total number of users. So right as of the minute I was looking at this, there were 774 users. And you can see there's over uh, 200,000 total users with 1 million posts and 1 million 1.7 million threads. So this is really where the Raspberry Pi shines. And there's still more. So you can see there's more trademark stuff and that stuff. And if we go back, there's even more for education. So here's educational guides. So if we go into resources, you can see there's guides on how to teach Raspberry Pi, learn, make. And you can see there's tons of guides here about lights out, add-ons, and these are guides that can help just kids learn for Raspberry Pi. And this is really what the community has, the Raspberry Pi has built, and it's what you pay for. So if you're looking for something that you can get involved with your kids in, no doubt starting off with the Raspberry Pi will be a much better idea because you do have the five years of almost continuous support and growth that the ASUS Tinkerboard just has not had yet. So now let's go on to the final conclusion.
Today, we've taken a look at the technical specifications, the performance, and forms and support of both the Raspberry Pi 3 and the ASUS Tinkerboard. In my opinion, the ASUS Tinkerboard still has a long way to go. This is mainly due to the supports and forms. There's just not much of it compared to the Raspberry Pi 3. I think that it's just because the ASUS Tinkerboard is just such a new product to the market. In maybe a few months or even years, we could see a pretty big support forum and community, but until then, it's hard for me to recommend the ASUS Tinkerboard. It is also almost $15 more expensive than the Raspberry Pi 3. Both of them have very good performance for the value, but having that extra $15 on the uh, ASUS Tinkerboard is mostly justified by its bigger processor and 4K video output capabilities. If you are looking to make a media center and want 4K video output, I think the ASUS Tinkerboard is a good option. If you're just a regular hobby maker, I think the Raspberry Pi 3 is a much better use of your money. At $35, not only are you getting a spectacular board which performs well, you're also getting access into a much larger community that has been running for over five years. So to conclude, if you're a novice or even an expert with single board computers, go with the ASUS Tinkerboard. If you're just a beginner trying to do a, just a few projects, I think the Raspberry Pi 3 is a much justifiable investment. Guys, thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And if you want to suggest any other boards for a showdown, please leave it in the comments below as well. Thanks for watching.